friends, hi YouTube, it's Liz here again and welcome to another YouTube Live here on Annie's YouTube channel. We are going to do a very fun and special crochet tutorial today and we are going to walk through it step by step. So what I want you to do first is click on the link in the description and print out your copy of our uh, tutorial today which is the In Bloom Afghan Block. So you can print the, the full PDF pattern and I'm going to go through it with you step by step. So what I also want you to do after you print out the pattern, get your yarn, get your hook ready. You can use a worsted weight yarn and a 5 millimeter hook. That's what I will be using today. But you can use any um, yarn that you want to use for this, for this tutorial. So once you get that ready, um, come back and we'll, we will work through this together live. Now if you're watching this on the replay and you're not watching live, you can uh, print that out, pause the video, print it out, get all, get all ready, and then um, work along with me. So I want to show you my block that I already made. And this is called the In Bloom block. It's got seven rounds. So we're going to go through each and every round, okay? Now what I also want you to do, if you make one of these, I want to see a picture of it. So head over to the Annie's Facebook group and uh, post a picture. If you're not already a member, just ask to join and then you'll be a member and you'll get to talk with other crocheters and post your pictures and ask questions and just all kinds of fun um, engagement with other makers. But if you do do that, post a picture so I can share it, okay? Now this is kind of a long tutorial, so I'm gonna move my phone now and we are gonna get right into this video. Okay. You can see the bottom of my stand a little bit, but that's okay, I don't think you mind. So here's a close-up. This is one that I made in a cotton yarn and a five millimeter hook. And this is the one that I made in a worsted weight acrylic yarn. And these are both worsted weight, but you can see it's a little different. Um, but so really, any, when you do a block like this, you can use any old yarn that you wanna use. It's great for a scrap yarn because you've got three different colors. You can use all one color if you want. However you wanna do it, you can really modify it. But it's great for using up scrap yarn. And I like this because it's got this pretty texture on the top where this is sort of, 3D uh, petals here. So we're gonna work through this step by step. Don't forget to print out your pattern if you wanna work along with me. It's a free pattern, just click on the link, print it out and you can work with me. Now, the yarn I'm using is a worsted weight acrylic by I Love This Yarn. You can get this at Hobby Lobby, but remember use any old yarn that you wanna use. Today I'm using my five millimeter hook these are my Susan Bates. These are my favorites. You could probably use a five and a half millimeter also with this, with this yarn. So this is a great video too if you have a little trouble reading patterns because I'm gonna walk you through this. So whenever I tell people, um, whenever people tell me they have trouble reading patterns, I try to get them to watch a video and go through the written steps when they work something because a lot of times when you see the video it's a cinch you can do it but if you see the video and you read the 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 instructions along with it you'll start to understand the instructions better too and that way if there's ever a pattern that you want to make that doesn't have a video you'll know exactly how to read these instructions so the first round says with your size h hook chain six and slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring then chain three and then work 15 double crochet in the ring and join and let's see what that looks like whenever you make these blocks it will often start with this instruction where you just make a chain to form a ring or um, some of them will have you do a magic circle but i'll show you that in another video so we're gonna start with a slip knot on the hook and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now here's the first chain I made right here. So we're gonna go back into that one and slip stitch. 
I like to go into the back bumps because I, for me it's easier to find. And that's the back bump right there of that first chain. So I'm gonna slip my hook in there, yarn over, pull it through that loop, and then pull it through the loop that's already on the hook. And you've simply made a ring. We're gonna chain up six. Oh no, I'm sorry, we're gonna chain up three. One, two, three, and that counts as my first double crochet. And now I'm just gonna work double crochets all through uh, this ring. And that's gonna be the start of our pattern. So you see so far I have three, this is four, and a double crochet is just yarn over, insert your hook, we're going straight into the center of that ring, yarn over again, three loops on the hook, pull through two and pull through two. That's a double crochet. I'm sure you know that if you've crocheted because it's about the most common crochet stitch you can do. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And if you lost count in between, just go back and count. Now we're gonna join this to form this circle, okay? So do you see here is the first chain three that I made, and that counts as a double crochet. So you're just gonna count the third of those three chains. So that's one, two, and three. And then you're just gonna insert your hook right into that third chain, uh, yarn over, pull through there, and then pull through the loop on the hook to make a slip stitch, and that joins your circle. Okay, that was round one. You see we did, uh, we joined in the third chain of the beginning chain three. You saw that I just did that. Now the second round is gonna be chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, then chain five, then skip the next stitch. And I'll show you how to do that and then I'll show you the brackets. So chain one, single crochet in the same stitch. So there's the same stitch. And then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then single crochet. Okay, so then it says skip the next stitch. So we're skipping this one. This is the one I worked. This is the next one. We're skipping this one. We're gonna go into this one. And now we've got our brackets. So see here in the brackets, it says single crochet in the next stitch, chain five, skip the next stitch and it's in the brackets, so that means we're just gonna repeat the instructions within those brackets all the way around. And then once we've gotten to the end of the round, we're gonna join in the beginning single crochet and then fasten off. See how simple that is? So let's, let's do what's in those brackets. Single crochet in the next stitch. Chain five and skip the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm at the end of where the bracketed instruction is, so I just start over. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet. Remember, we're skipping in between. One, two, three, four, five. Skip, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Skip that one, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Skip that one, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now you see how in my brackets it says single crochet in the next stitch and then chain five and then skip the next stitch? So whatever is at the end of the bracket, that's how you want to end. You don't want to end on a chain five or a single crochet. You want to end 
at the end of the bracket. If you're here and you're at the beginning of the round, then you know you missed a step. So let's see where I'm at here. So I still have to do a chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I have one stitch left here and that's, and that's the one I'm gonna skip. So I'm gonna end with skip a stitch. And that's the end of my round, see? Because here's the, the beginning single crochet. So we know I did that right. So we're just gonna slip stitch into that beginning single crochet, yarn over, and pull through. And I should have eight loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that was round two. And that's a good thing to remember whenever you're doing anything in brackets, if you haven't ended at the last instruction in that bracket, so where the bracket ends kind of, then you know you did something wrong. You always wanna end here. Sometimes if it doesn't end there, the instructions will be very uh, specific that you're gonna end at a different point. But here, because it's the end of the bracket, we wanna end at that thing, skip next stitch. And we did, so we're good. So now we fastened off this color. We're going to join a new color in any chain space, and we're going to work a chain two. So let's see. Let's do the green. The way I like to join, especially when I'm doing grannies or um, blocks like this, is I always join with a slip knot already on my hook. It's just the way I like to do it. It seems like it's more secure. And it says join in any chain, so I'm just gonna pick this chain, and then you can just slip stitch right through that slip knot that's already on your hook, and you're nice and secure. Okay, and then we're gonna chain two. That counts as a double, a uh, half double crochet. Now we're gonna put a lot of stitches into this little chain five space or loop. So I'm going to squeeze this down as much as I can get it over to the right so I can fit everything in here. So for round three, we join the next color and we chain two. See, it says that counts as the first half double crochet. So now we've got some parentheses. We're going to do half double crochet, four double crochet, chain three, slip stitch, in the last stitch, four double crochet, and then two half double crochet. That's a lot of instructions, but because it starts with a parenthesis and ends with a parenthesis, that means it all goes into the same chain space, okay? So let me show you that, and then we'll do the next bracket, which is pretty much the same. So we're gonna do a half double crochet. That's what it starts with. Remember, we're working everything into this chain five space. And then it says four double crochet. So that's one, two, three, and four. Now it says chain three and slip stitch in the last stitch. Well, let me show you what that looks like because you may not have seen that instruction. And this is basically what a pico is. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna slip stitch into the last stitch, which is this basically this stitch where we just came out of. So just bring your hook back down. I like to just go into the, you can go into both. Let's see how that looks. So you can go under the V, which is right here. See, that's the V or I, I sometimes just go like this under these two loops. Um, I think you can do it either way. That sort of brings it to the front a little bit and I like that. Okay, so I'll do the other one um, into the V so you can see the difference. And now it says do four more double crochet. So we did our little pico. So we're just gonna do four more double crochet into the same whoops, loop, there we are. One, two, three, and four, and then two half double crochet. One, and two. Okay, and that completes everything within those first set of parentheses. Okay, so we just did all of those instructions in the same chain space. 
Now we're going to move to the next chain space and work the basically the same thing, which is two half double crochet, four double crochet, chain three, slip stitch, four double crochet, two half double crochet in each chain space around. Okay, so we're going to do that basically around the entire block. And then we're going to join in the second chain of the beginning chain two. So here's our next chain five space. I'm going to move this so it doesn't. Okay, so one, two, starts with two half double crochets, and then four double crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to chain up three to make that little pico. One, two, three. And see, you can go under the V there with your hook and then just yarn over, pull it through there, and pull it through the loop on the hook. That's a pico. And then we're going to do four double crochets again. One. But see how it sort of pushes it to the back? I like this one because it, it pushes it to the front. So I kind of just do it on the side of the stitch rather into rather than doing it into the top of the stitch. And I think you can really do it that way. It's it's probably not the correct <laughs> the correct way, but to me it looks nicer, so that's how I did it. Um one, two, three, is that four? Yeah, that's four double crochets, and then two half double crochets. Okay, we're doing the same thing in the next chain space, and we're just going to do this all the way around. So we have those big, fluffy, pretty petals uh, all around our block. Four. And if you're working along with me, then you're going to have a nice little block when you're finished here. And of course you can always, if you're watching the replay, just pause the video if you need to watch what I'm doing again. So that's my four double crochet and then don't forget to end with those two half double crochets. And now we're going to start it all over again in the next chain loop. So one Try to just push that over if you need to, to make room for all those stitches that you're putting in there. One, two, three, four. Let's do my pico. One, two, three. See how I just put it in the side like that? Sort of the vertical bar, I think those are called, or the horizontal bar, the horizontal bar. So if you're going into the side of a stitch like that, it's often called a hor the horizontal bar. And if you do a lot of Tunisian, you, you probably know that. Okay, and half double crochet, half double crochet. So it kind of starts off, and it starts, to, starts with the half double crochets. The double crochets are in the middle. And then it ends with the half double crochets. One, two, three, and four. Pico. One, two, and three. And this is a great, um, like I said, a great way to use up your scrap yarn. And if you make a bunch of these, you can have a really pretty afghan, flowers, afghan. One, two, three, four, oops, hold on. So I did two half doubles, two doubles, that's three, four doubles. One, two, three for my pico. One, two, three, four for my 
double, one, and two half doubles at the end. So in case you didn't know, I didn't say it, but a half double is just yarn over, um, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Once you have three loops on your hook, you just pull through all three of those. That's a half double. See how it ends up in the middle? So you just pull this down so it, so it goes to the right, so you can fit all your stitches in there. That's another half double. One, two, three, four double crochets, a pico, one, two, three, just pop that through there and slip stitch. I love picos, they just make everything really pretty. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, and four. This is my last, oh no, not my second to last chain space. So we're gonna do one, two half double crochets in there and then go right over to the next one. And these ends you just weave in at the end. Just put those in the back so you can weave them in when you're done. Okay, so that was two half double crochets. Three, that's four double crochets. Pico, one, two, three. Insert your hook, pull it through to make a slip stitch. One, two, three, and four double crochets. And then the last two half double crochets of this round. And this is probably the longest round because we really put a lot of stitches in there. See how it curls a little bit, but that's fine because it's going to stop curling once we finish the rounds. Okay, so let's see. Here's where, here's where we left off. You see, we did this, this whole group of instructions. We did that in each chain space around, okay? And then we're just going to join in the second chain of the beginning chain two, and then we're going to fasten off the green. So you see all the way down here, that's my first chain that I made. That was, that counted as the first half double crochet. So you're just gonna find the first chain, which is right there, and then pop your hook into the second chain, which is right there. Slip stitch right through there. That's it. So that's the end of that round. And then you just cut your yarn and pull it on through there, okay? On to round four. Okay, so working behind the last round, that's a little tricky, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Single crochet, wait, where am I? Yeah, so working behind the last round, single crochet on round two, and then join the next color with a back post single crochet. So you may not have seen that before. So let me show you what that looks like. So like I said, I always like to start with a slip knot already on my hook when I join a color. Behind the last round. Okay, so we can put, put, choose any, um, any single crochet we want to. So now this was the, the three, round three. Remember, we did all those stitches in round three. So this is round two right here. This was round one. This right here where these single crochets are, that's round two. So now we're gonna be, we're gonna work into round two instead of working into round three like you normally would. So you're gonna choose one of these single crochets and you're just gonna, um, work a back post single crochet around that. So you have to start from the back. So come in from the back like this 
not from the front. Come in from the back with your hook. And then, so you go back to front and then front to back, okay? Now grab your yarn. Now, look, you've got two loops on your hook for a single crochet. So you just yarn over and pull it through. And you've put a single crochet right around that, around the post of the single crochet of round two. Working behind, see, so we started from the back, around the single crochet on round two, we went on round two, and we joined with a back post single crochet around any single crochet. See, you could have picked any one of those. Now we're gonna, here we are, chain five, and then we're gonna back post single crochet around next single crochet on round two, and then chain five again. So what's within those brackets, we are going to just work all the way around our block. Okay, so remember you should be you should end when you get back to the beginning of the round, you should end on the where the instruction says to chain five. That's where you should end, okay? So let's do that. So we're gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're, we're, remember we're you have to just sort of rotate your work because you're working along the back of this. Afghan. Here's the next single crochet. You just pop your hook through there, pull up a loop, and make a single crochet. And then one, two, three, four, five. Where's my next single crochet? Right here. So if you just hold it like this, you really don't, you know, you're working around the post. You don't have to try to say, oh, I'm working from the back to the front or the front to the back. If your work is rotated like this, just kind of pinch it so you're working around that post. Oops. Then it's, an, it's easy like that. See? So just work around the post. One, two, three, four, five. So my next single crochet, I'm just going to pinch it like that so I can work right around that post. One, two, three, four, five. Work a single crochet around the post. One, two, three, four, five. Here's my next one. One, two, three, four, five. I keep dropping my loop there. Here's my next one. One, two, three, four, five. And here is the last single crochet of that round. So we're gonna work around the post of it. Now what do I have left here? So here, we're back at the beginning of the round, right? And remember, we, are, we should end at a chain five. That's where we need to end because that's where the bracket ends. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's the last thing we do in those instructions, in those bracketed instructions, okay? So we did that around, and now we're just gonna join in the beginning back post single crochet. So simple. Let's grab that beginning one, and then you just slip stitch in there to join. That's it. Get rid of these guys, okay. That was round four. Now on to round five with the same color, we're gonna slip stitch in the first chain space, and then we're gonna chain three and work six double crochet in the same chain space. And then we've got some stars here. So let's work this first part first, and then we'll, I'll show you how to do what's in the stars. Okay, so slip stitch in the first chain space. Grab the right yarn, we've got a lot of ends here. This is the first chain space because this is where we ended here, so this is the first chain space. 
of the round. Slip stitch in there. And then we're going to chain up three. One, two, three. That counts as a double crochet. And then we're going to work six double crochet into here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so now you're just going to have to move this out of your way to do this. Now the next instruction says, so you've got a star and then you've got some brackets. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Now within those brackets, that means that's all going in the, chain, in the same chain space. And the star means that's sort of the beginning of the instructions. And then you've got two stars. And that means that's where you're going to end your last repeat, okay? So I'll show you how, what that looks like. But after we do the corner, then we're going to do seven double crochet in the next chain space. And then you're going to repeat from the star around, ending last repeat at star star. So basically, we're going to do this to make a corner. The next petal is going to be seven double crochet. And then we're going to go back to another corner and then back to another petal until we get to the end. But at the end, we're not going to end at the seven double crochet. We're going to end at um, the corner because that's where the two stars are. So we, it wants us to end at this part of the repeat, not at this part of the repeat. That's why it's not in the brackets like it is here. That's why you use the stars. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we did, we're gonna do the corner next. So the corner is three double crochets. One, two, three, and a chain three. One, two, three, and three double crochets. So you know when you do a square, you have to increase in the corner that's what this chain space is about. And that squares it, it turns the corner. If you don't put that increase, you're not gonna get a flat square. You're gonna get, it's gonna curl up. So now we're gonna do a petal, which is just the seven double crochets in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now we're going to do another corner. And that's just exactly like the last corner that we did. Three double crochets, chain three, and three double crochets. So I hope this helps you going through these instructions like this. I have a lot of people tell me that they have difficulty with either charts or just these written instructions, and they only... Um, I've heard people say, I've been crocheting for 20 years and I've never read a pattern. So that's really, I feel like you, you open up a lot of doors for yourself and a lot of um, creative opportunity to make something different if you learn how to read a pattern. So that's why I like to go through it step by step with you. So you can see um, that it's really not that hard and once you do it, the instructions start to become much more familiar to you once you've worked through a few patterns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because the amount of just beautiful, unique, you know, amazing designer patterns out there is endless. So you can just get anything and everything in a pattern. But if you can't read it, it's not really helpful to you. So that's why I like for people to be able to read these patterns and charts. Okay, so that's my corner. And I'm going to do my seven double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So remember, I'm just working my way around like I did here. Okay, so this is a corner. 
and hopefully I did this right while I was talking. I've got a petal, a corner, a petal, a corner, a petal, okay. Well, let's see here. Corner, petal, corner, petal, corner, petal. I think I may have added too many of these because it looks like, see, I'm not ending up in where I should be ending up because this is a petal and this is a, oh no, I'm good, I'm good. I have to do one more corner. Let me see. Um, yes, so I should end at a corner. See, chain three, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in next chain space, corner, star, star. We're ending at star, star, ending last repeat at star, star. So I should have this right if right here should be a corner. And this is a petal, and this is a petal. So right here should be a corner because it goes petal corner, petal corner. So let's see. It looks a little, <laughs> it looks like it's curling up a little bit. So I'm not 100% confident that that's right. But I mean, according to the written instructions, it's right. Let's just see. One, two, three. Okay, and then we just join to the third chain. One, two, three. Definitely looks a little wonky, but I think it's right. See, there's my corners. And there's a petal corner. Yep, yeah, that's right. It just looks a little curled and wonky because with this pattern, um, you, since you added so many petals around, so many stitches in there, you really need to block it. So I blocked this cotton one and see how pretty it turned out once I blocked it. I haven't blocked this one yet, but it still looks, doesn't really look too wonky. So if it looks a little wonky like this, just count, make sure. I mean, it seems like we did the instructions right. And if I count here, I've got four corners and four sides, and that's what I need for a square. So I think we're good. So we joined in the third chain of the beginning, chain three, and now round six, we're gonna chain three, double crochet in each stitch around with double crochet, chain three, double crochet in each corner space, and then join in the third chain of the beginning, chain three. So that's an easy round. We're just gonna basically double crochet all around it, and we're gonna to remember to make our corners when we get to the corners. And for this round the corner is just double crochet, chain three, double crochet. Where'd you go? Okay, so one, two, three, that's my first double crochet. And then I'm just gonna double crochet in each double crochet around. And that will probably this round will probably take that curl out of it. So it'll probably like flatten it out a little bit. Okay, here's my corner. And that's gonna be double crochet, chain three, double crochet. And there's the next double crochet. So just start working in each one of those around. So in case you joined me um, late and you didn't miss the beginning, if you check um, the, the, the description. So if you go to the description, there is a link there for this pattern. So you can print this pattern. It's a free pattern. So just click on the link. It'll bring up the PDF. You can print the PDF and then um, work this this afghan block 
And if you want to rewatch the video, if you m miss the beginning, you can watch the replay. It's going to be up there on YouTube forever. So don't think if you missed the live, you missed it. You can definitely watch the replay. If you're a beginner, you can pause it, you know, to try to figure out what I did, rewind it, whatever you need to do. But I, I um, would encourage you to go through the written pattern along with the video. And don't forget that if you do make one of these blocks or make a whole afghan out of, out of it, that would be amazing. Um, I would love, love, love for you to go over to the Annie's Facebook page, join the Annie's Crochet Group, and then you can post some pictures of your afghan block or just post pictures of whatever you're making. And if you have any questions about anything, that's always a good place to ask questions to and just show off what you've been working on. So I would love if you did that because I, um, I like to share all the, the pictures of the blocks that people make. And if you're not familiar with this block party, I do this at the beginning of the month. So here on YouTube, I do a new block the first week of each month, I mean, the first Wednesday of each month. So Wednesdays I go live at 1 p.m. Eastern time and at the first of the month we do a block party and you will always get one of these free patterns for the new um, whatever the block is that month. And if you missed any of the old ones, they are in the crochet um, live crochet video playlist. And like I said, at the beginning of July, the first Wednesday of July, we'll have another block. Okay, so there, there we go. I'm at the end of round six, and it just says uh, join in the third chain of the beginning chain three and fasten off. So we're just going to join in the third chain. One, two, three. Join with a slip stitch and then fasten off this color. So once you do that slip stitch, just pull that yarn right through there. And that's it. See, now it's not really looking wonky anymore. It's looking very nice and square. So we are good. Okay, last round. We will join the next color in any corner space. Chain four, that counts as a treble. And then tr treble, chain three, treble in the same chain space. Let's just start with that <laughs> so I can remember what to do. Okay, so start with our slip knot on the hook. And it says any corner space, so it doesn't matter which one, you can just pick a corner and join in there. So just join with a slip stitch like that. And then we're gonna chain up four, one, two, three, four, that's a treble, that's the height of a treble, so that counts as a treble. And then we're gonna do treble chain three and two trebles. So the treble is like this. Two yarn over, so one, two. That's basically the difference between a treble and a double. So when you yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop, you've got four loops on your hook. So then you just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that yarn over, pull through two thing or instruction is what makes it a treble. So for a double, you yarn over and pull through two twice. For a treble, you yarn over and pull through two three times. And we're gonna chain three, and we're gonna work two more trebles to make this corner. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Do that one more time. Pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So that's our first corner. And we're basically gonna do that in all the corners. Okay, so we did that in the same chain space. And now skip the next stitch, three front post double crochet around the next stitch, and then skip the next two stitches four times. Okay, so here we've got a bracket here and a bracket here. That means everything that's within those brackets, we're gonna do it four times. 
So we're going to do these, this sentence four times, okay? So here we are, skip the next stitch, and then we're going to start working those three front post double crochets. So we skip this stitch. Now this is the stitch we're going to work our post stitches around, okay? So a post stitch is yarn over, insert your hook from front to back because we're working a front post, front to back, and then back to front, and then just work a du double crochet around there. So pull through two, pull through two. So that's one. And then if you kind of just hold it like this, it's easier to, to work around the post because you're work not working in the top, you're working around the post. So yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, go around that post, pull through two, pull through two, okay? And then it says skip two stitches, one, two, and then do what we just did again. So we're, here's the next double crochet. We're gonna work three post stitches around that double crochet. That's one, two, three double crochet post stitches. We've got all kinds of stitches in this block, so you're learning a lot today. <laughs> okay, so that was, that was three front post double crochets around the next stitch, skip two stitches. So we just did that once. Skip two stitches. That, that was once, we skipped two stitches. This is, do it again, skip two stitches, that was twice. Do it again, this is my third time. Okay, skip two stitches, and this is gonna be the fourth one. Two, three, and remember, skip two stitches, that's the end of the instruction. So here's where we should be at, skipping these last two stitches. And then it says, three front post double crochet around the next stitch, and then skip the next stitch, okay? So remember, we were right here at skip these two stitches, that was the last of the instructions that we did four times. And then it says, three front, three front post double crochet around the next stitch, one, two, three, and then skip the next stitch, which is this one, right? Skip the next stitch, that's right where we are right here. And then we're gonna do what's in the brackets, which is the corner. And then we're gonna repeat from star around, ending at star star, so we should end right here, okay? So once we do the corner, we're gonna start right back here where this first star is. So here's our corner. One. That's two trebles, chain three, and two trebles. That's the corner. Now we're gonna go back to, to star. So here we go, skip next stitch, three front post double crochet around the next stitch, skip two stitches, four times. Let's see if I can count that. Skip next stitch. Three front post stitches. Skip two stitches, that was one time. Skip two stitches, that was two times. Skip two stitches, that was three times. One, two, three, and skip two stitches, and that was four times. So we did that four times, and then it just says, three front post double around the next stitch and skip the next stitch. So here we'll do the three front post double, here we'll skip. So we are exactly as we should be with our instructions. And then we're just gonna do, finish that all the way around. 
and then I'll show you where we should end up because we should end up exactly as the instructions tell us to um, that um, two star. So when it says two star, that's where you want to, that's where you want your last instruction, set of instructions to be. Skip next stitch, three front around the next stitch. Skip this one. One, two, three. And if you've got your PDF in front of you, you can see, you can just read along with me and see exactly what we're doing here. Sometimes all the brackets and the stars get a little confusing. Skip two. So um, that's why I like to go over it step by step. But once you do a few of these, I mean, if you're going to make a whole afghan, if, you know, you're not going to even, after about the third or fourth, you'll probably be able to put the paper down and just remember each, each step. But... If you do do this with me, then you'll probably feel a little bit more confident with your next pattern. Okay, now we're at the corner. Reading your next pattern and knowing that if there's no video for it, you can always do what's in those written instructions. And my little piece of advice, if you are new to reading patterns is, um, there's a lot of great patterns online, but I would start out with, um, you know, maybe maybe a magazine or, um, you know, maybe something from Annie's or a Creative Studio or something like that, or maybe your favorite crochet magazine. So that way you know you're getting um, a pattern that's going to be 100% correct and tested and all that good stuff. Once you get real familiar with reading patterns, you can sort of recognize if there's a mistake somewhere. Um, but, you know, any, th any kind of pattern that's going to be in a magazine is, like, tested and then double tested and then triple tested. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you're going to get the correct instructions. Okay, so doing another post. One, two, three. Skip two. One, two. One, two. Three, skip two, one, two, three, skip two. And remember, these block patterns are a great, um, a great way to learn to read patterns, and these are all free. So if you really want to practice reading patterns, go back and look at all my previous block, uh, block of the month videos because I go through each one just like this. Step by step, we read through the instructions together. Um, so that way you can, you know, get that, that sort of learning. So if you like this one, go back and look at the other ones uh, for my block of the month. I think there were three, three previous ones. So let's see, where did we end here? Three front post double crochet around the next stitch and skip the next stitch See that double star? That means that's where we are ending our last repeat at the double star. So did we? We did three front post double and then skip the next stitch. That's right. We are exactly where we should be because this is the last stitch of the round and we're supposed to skip that. And then it just says join in the fourth chain of the beginning chain four. One, two, three. Here's my fourth chain. And we can just join, whoops, sorry, off camera there. One, two, three, four. Wait, see that little chain was kind of covered up. <laughs> One, two, three, there's the fourth chain. And join with a slip stitch. Fasten off and pull right through. Look at that. We have made this entire block step by step with these instructions together. So now 
the last thing you have to do is just get all these little ends. Mine are everywhere. Yours are probably neater. <laughs> Mine are kind of all over the place. You just have to get all those little ends and weave them in, and you have this beautiful block. I would also wet block these um, because then you can sort of push these petals down a little bit. But it still looks pretty like this. This one's been blocked, so you can see the difference. And, of course, all my ends are weaved in. This is what the back looks like. So yeah, we did this together. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me flip my phone and say goodbye. Whew. <laughs> that was a long video. So if you stuck with me through this whole video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of it. I hope you were able to maybe learn a thing or two about crochet that you didn't know before. And I hope you continue to read patterns and check out my older videos. Um, all, it's all on the live crochet video playlist. You can check out all of my older videos and don't forget to post that picture on the Facebook page if you make one of these Afghan blocks. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you next time. Bye!